The next speaker is a, a veteran in the Singapore political scene. All right, he he is very well known throughout all the races. He is a Malay. He is Jufri Mahmud. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I look a bit old, I know. But my spirit is still very young. I feel that uh, the job is not done. The job is not done until uh, we have more people in parliament, more of the people's voices are heard in parliament. Until then, the job is not done. So today, the rally today is about the protest against the policy to bring in and jack up our population up to 6.9 million. That is only uh, the start. And we have already heard voices from the establishment that Singapore can take in very comfortably 10 million people. How do you feel about that? In fact, Singapore is very unique, very unique in the sense that we bring in people up to 40%. People who are foreigners, they make up up to 40% or we are nearing 40% very unique but we are not against the foreigners what we want is actually really talented qualified people who come in who can contribute to our well-being to our growth not Gaza Buta you go to Gelang huh? You go to Gelang. You see all these ladies, sexy ladies selling beer. They are also talent, you know. So this is the kind of talent that the government is talking about. We are not xenophobic. We are not. Singaporeans are very rational. So the I don't know who planted this word xenophobic in order to to mislead or to deflect what they are doing if this is a trial and error thing they are doing with our life trial and error they tried once in the early days when they asked you to stop at two and that contributed to the problem that we have today so today it is another trial and error all right if it is a trial and error they bring in so many people to singapore and from the reaction of the people it is an error they have put it they have tried it and it, it is proven that it is an error are they making a u-turn they are telling you they are now reducing reducing the number of foreigners who come in into Singapore but do you really know what the figures are? we are not they are not transparent and we don't have access to the real figures and what we can know is that the trains are still packed the buses are still packed Singaporeans each day have to struggle to go to work so because of that when you reach your workplace you're already almost three-quarter exhausted even before you begin your work so in the present circumstances you all know what the consequences are to this policy but have you ever asked yourself who benefits from this? Do the people benefit? The PP is so used to say that uh, it is a trade-off. 
Alright? You be a little bit uncomfortable and you give up some of your rights for a trade-off. But what is the trade-off? What is the trade-off? This policy is a wrong policy. Because you cannot look at this policy in isolation. This policy has affected almost all ministries. You look at the Ministry of Finance. How does this policy of bringing in large numbers of foreigners affect the Ministry of Finance? It has drained our finances in order to keep them. How does it affect the Ministry for Home Affairs? For so many years, Singaporeans have forgotten about strikes and riots. And now, these problems start to come back. So it affects the police force, the home team will have to pet itself, you know, has to be padded up in order to cope with this influx. How does it affect our social landscape, our culture? We took 50 over years for the Malays, the Chinese, the Indians and the Eurasians, the four main races, to accommodate, adjust, adapt ourselves to each other and suddenly you find among, among yourself, among us faces which you don't see in the past. You see, when you bring them into Singapore in large numbers, so, so huge a number and so short a time, they have strength. You see, now some of them have started misbehaving. They can condemn Singaporeans, they can criticize and insult Singaporeans. And what happened to that guy? What is his name? Bello? He insulted Singaporeans when he was pointed out. He says, oh, somebody hacked his Facebook and the police are investigating. But what happened to him? They allowed him to go free. You see, when you bring large numbers of people to Singapore, then they will form their own community, their own clique. And what will that do to our social cohesion? All right, now we have to spend money to adapt them, to acclimatize them to our way of life. All right? But you are hearing voices now telling Singaporeans to adapt our lifestyle to theirs. So this is the folly. That, this is the folly that the government, I don't know. They are in fact, the government ministers are in fact in a very different class with ordinary Singaporeans. They have lost touch with the ground. And then they start contradicting themselves. You look at what happened about the columbarium. This poor MP has got to defend after checking from the HDB and the ministry. He said, oh, it's not the first time. In the past, it has been done. And then Ko Bong Wan went to parliament and said, oh, in the past, we have not, this is the first time it's happening. You see, now they are so confused. They are so confused. They are really out of touch. You know why they are out of touch? Because they feel the foreigners that they bring in into Singapore, whom they give citizenship so easily, will support them. Will support them and keep them in power. That is why they are very complacent now. Policies are starting to go haywire. In the past, we don't get such things. How does this affect other ministries? This policy. I've said the Ministry of Finance, Home Affairs, 
national development you see when you bring in so many people you're supposed to have helicopter view right that's why you're paid so highly helicopter view means they're talking about the apache helicopter right where you can see beyond the horizon so you can anticipate problems but they cannot see they cannot rationalize that when you bring in so many people you need also to improve the infrastructure that is why now we have all these problems property prices went up sky high because of the shortage who is causing the shortage hgb houses they are letting these new citizens or permanent residents to buy and live in hdb estate and that created the shortage so in a simple law of supply and demand when there is shortage the price goes up who suffers singaporean suffers we talk about the private sector they don't bring in only people to do the uh, construction work and all the other lower uh, sectors in the lower sectors you know but they also bring in rich people people with people with money and when these people with money they come to singapore what do they do they buy properties they buy the private properties and when they buy the private properties they create a shortage once they create a shortage the same thing comes back not only hdb private property also the price go skyrocket so this is how it is affecting singaporeans we talk about the ministry of transport everybody knows i don't have to say further because you experience it day in and day out train breakdowns and then they spend they spend your money although the mrt and the bus companies are privatized but they spend the people's money they spend billions of dollars people's money to prop up a privatized company you see how their mind works now i think they are too busy looking at their cpf statements right so much so that they don't care about you lu mati lu punya pasal if the government is the government of the people they must they must look at what effects how their policies will affect the people not only when election is approaching they are very responsive all right you make one phone call the next minute you see them coming that is not the way they must think long term anticipate problems because we are laymen all right if they can't do that they must as, might as well pack up and go home so about wages stagnating for the past 10 years this thing has really shown us i hope they realize over the last 10 years that is the time when this influx start to come right and because of that because of that your wages are suppressed and grace fu the minister in the prime minister's office she has admitted the government is tightening the work permit the s class in order that the wages of the pm ets can increase what does that mean it means that the influx has stagnated or suppressed your wages they don't have to play wayang singaporeans now they are very very alert because of social media in the past in the past they can say anything all right they put a monkey they dress a monkey in white they say this is our candidate you will believe it because the newspapers and the media will say yes yes singaporeans this is a candidate he's not a monkey 
But now, when they say something wrong, not the next day, my friend. The next minute, they will be taken on. So, as we progress, as Singaporeans become more acquainted with social media, things will improve. So what they do? They are trying to curb. But can they do that? Can they do that? Let's wait and see. So my friends, the influx of foreigners into Singapore, we don't blame those people who come in because they are allowed to come in. Right? They come here, they want to earn a living. But do you know that many of them are being exploited? You know how much the levy is now for a general construction worker? The levy, every time you complain that too many foreigners are, Singa are in Singapore, how do they react? They increase the levy. Kiri you kena, kanan also you kena. And they just fill in their pockets. And they are so rich. The levy itself amounts to a billion dollars every month. Every month, my friend. You calculate how many foreigners are we, do we have? People who pay levy. Every month, they're making more than a billion dollars. And why are they so stingy? You see, nowadays, you go to any place, any temples or any civic or NGO organizations where free food is served. Free food is served. You look at the queue. Wow, Singaporeans so poor. Free food, the queue is getting longer day by day. So why is the government so stingy? Now you see uh, the government in reaction to the protests. That's why I say this protest, peaceful protest is very important. Because these people, they are deaf. They are deaf and they, are, they don't care too much unless they see the protest. So now citizens are protesting. The columbarium protests once they see you protest, they will react. So today, although the crowd is not so big, but I think they will also, I hope they don't say, oh, Singaporeans have accepted our policy of reducing foreigners from coming to Singapore. You see the crowd used to be first five over thousand, now only less than a thousand or a thousand odd. If they did, they Take that as a reflection of the people's happiness, a people's acceptance of their policies, they are wrong. So, fellow Singaporeans, this place is ours. We built it up. We invite people to come in not to create problems for us, they come in here to complement what we have built. And we have the right to choose who we would like to come in. Because this country is ours. You are a Singaporean, you think you can go to some other places in the world in large numbers and then try to misbehave you, you go to Australia enough if you misbehave you know what you'll get but in Singapore there are simply too many of them as I said we are not against them but we are against the policies of the of the government you know why I say who benefits the government benefits by having so many workers this is the easy way out to grow the GDP. Once you grow the GDP, because of numbers, right? The GDP increases by a certain percent. The government packs the ministerial salary to the GDP. 
Macam bapa dia beri company lah. No other country in the world lah. Ministers pack their salary to the growth of the GDP. Why are they doing it? Because you allow them to do it. Ministers getting millions. Oh, they say the top earners in the private sector, they earn so much. The top lawyers, businessmen make millions. Go and be lawyer lah. Be businessman. Step out of the cabinet. If money is your, your prime reason for going into politics, you get out of politics. Let other Singaporeans who are equally qualified to manage the country pay them less than half the salary. They will gladly do it. Because in politics, we have the passion. You know what passion means? Passion to serve the people. Not to watch my CPF account every month. I'm very happy, Lim Sui Se says. I'm very happy looking at my CPF statement. That indicates the mentality of the present leadership. Why are they doing it? Because you allow them to do it. The 60.1% Singaporeans allow them to do it. So let us wake these people up. Let us wake these people up. You give them the freedom to do all these things and then they become out of touch because they don't dine in a hawker center on a daily basis like you and I. Where do they go? And they go to the expensive restaurants, they can steal the toothpick. You see? You see, this is the kind of mentality they have. And they got no shame. He got no shame. He says, oh, uh, I took the toothpick. As though he said, what, what achievement? He can smuggle the toothpick out of the restaurant. So this is the kind of mentality of ministers that we have today. They don't care about you. They don't care. You see, how this policy of influx of foreigners affect the Ministry of Education. Can you tell me how it affects the Ministry of Education? As I say, it affects almost the entire ministries, the entire government. They give scholarships to foreigners, right? Malay say, makan tanggung berak canggung. Everything they supply. And Singaporeans will have to cope with the high the increases of university fees and school expenses. What about places? When there are many foreigners who become permanent residents and become citizens, the number of schools, they have to recruit more teachers. This will affect the finance ministry, the allocation. So what do you get as Singaporeans? In fact, we should be given priority over all these things, as many Singaporeans as possible must be given scholarship. Now you want, if you, you are facing some problems, you go to them, I tell you, you will give up. <laughs> there are so many conditions you have to fulfill. They ask you how much your son is earning, how much your, your daughter is earning, is your grandfather still working? Before they give you one dollar. So foreigners come here, they don't need to ask. I don't know why they sangat sayang with foreigners. So Singaporeans, wake up, please. We haven't got much time. The time is approaching. And time flies. Before you know it, you'll find PAP candidates visiting you at your houses. Right? So the time is approaching. So we cannot accept this policy. If Singapore has got space for another 10 million people, let true blue Singaporeans make up the numbers. 
Let us take our time to utilize the resources that our forefathers, our fathers, our grandfathers has helped. They have helped to accumulate. Let these funds be enjoyed by true blue Singaporeans. So, ladies and gentlemen, although you are small in numbers today, but you can have a far reach. Your social media, spread the word. Keep on spreading the word. If you allow the PAP to get away with all this nonsense, I tell you, you forget. Forget about everything. When you reach retirement age, you reach 55 years old, that is, that is a pledge, that is an agreement right, between the government and the people. They are suka suka, 55 years, they say they hold back your money for another 10 years. Who gave them the, the, the permission to do that? Uh, they tell you at 55 years old, you do not know how to manage your money. Just because a few people went to Batam and squandered their money, went to casino. Casino also, they are making one. Went to casino and squandered the money. They say, oh, all 55 years old cannot manage their money. So we must manage for you. Hold for another 10 years and we give you in bits and pieces. The Muslims cannot go on their Hajj because for a single pilgrim, they have to spend about $10,000, ten to $12,000. If you have some money in the CPF, the government gives you only $5,000. What to do is $5,000? Husband and wife wants to go is $20,000, you know. And he has got every right to his own money, to perform his Hajj. And what about you all? After working so many years, 30 over years of work, you would like to take a holiday, right? With money, you can go travel the world. Right? So they deny you that, that right. Why? Because they feel safe. Their policies of bringing in foreigners, award them with citizenship, they feel safe. You know, now they are making their calculations, you know. They have all the data, all the results of the previous elections. They know what precinct, what constituency, how many percent votes. Don't be surprised. They will tell these foreigners, okay, you, I give you a house here, you go. All right? You can never know what they are doing because they are not transparent. Why is it necessary Singapore is already built up? Every election, uh, you want to play around with the gerrymandering, you know? Because they have the means. Who are their means? These newly minted citizens. They will just tell them, okay, we give you citizenship, uh, this is your house, we give you discount, you stay here, make up the numbers, but you must vote for PAP. This is the effect that it will, go, it will have on the government policies. They feel safe. So I don't know whether Singaporeans can influence the foreigners. If you don't want things to happen to you like what is happening to us, you better be careful with your votes. You think you can convince them? You convince them, the PAP will trouble. They will run away, the PAP, because they got no means. They know everybody now is alert and well informed. So my friends, we in the political party, all right? We in the political party, we are working our hearts out to give Singaporeans an alternative voice. It is not easy. 
if you are in the opposition. It is not easy. And I think you know that. So the least you can do is to respond to all the effort for our common interests. We cannot allow the PAP to do as they like. That time is gone. That time is gone. Any potential PAP MPs who want to stand for election, be careful. Because of the stupidity and the contradictory attitude of the ministers, you will, be, you will end up having to defend a policy that is so stupid. And then at the end of the day, you really lose face. Alright? You know what I'm talking about? So my friends, I hope, I hope, please, spread the message through Facebook, through neighbours, through workplaces. Alright? We don't want to be treated as second-class citizens in our own country. Thank you very much.